so long, Mom. I'm off to drop the bomb, so don't wait up for me. But though I may roam, I'll come back to my home, although it may be a pile of debris. Remember, Mommy, I'm off to get a commie, so send me a salami and try to smile somehow. I'll look for you when the war is over, an hour and a half from now. The Brotherhood of Steel. They're mysterious, they're in every Fallout game, and they look badass using power armor and a minigun. Of course, I assume my grandma would look badass using power armor and a minigun. Who are the Brotherhood, though? The games do always label them as good karma. That's something in their favor, right? So, the first time we meet the Brotherhood, we find the Lost Hills Bunker in Fallout 1. Apparently, Power Armor looks so amazingly awesome that with no real knowledge of their policies, interests, goals, not even what they serve in the cafeteria, the Vault Dweller wants to join. The Brotherhood is a very closed organization, though, so they send you off to examine West Tech Research Facility a hotbed of pre-war military tech. The kind of place that would make sense for the Chinese to nuke to hell and back four or five times. The kind of place Wastelanders charmingly call The Glow. The Glow is the most irradiated place in Fallout history. Of course, as an energy weapon using Vault Dweller, I immediately charged into the glow to find a laser pistol with absolutely no radiation protection and only the Radex and Radaway I could scavenge from the site. As I ran away, the game gave me lovely encounters on the world map just to tell me that my flesh was falling off my bones and that I was violently spewing blood from every orifice. The best part about rushing the glow, though, is that when I finally stumbled on the Lost Hills Bunker, this guy asks if I can go to the Glow and not to bother him until I've accomplished the mission. Then, with my feet still planted in the exact same spot, I tell him I've gotten it taken care of. He takes my proof, then lets me into the Bunker as a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. Here, we can finally learn something about these stylishly dressed badasses. Over the course of Fallout, we learn... 1. The Brotherhood of Steel were originally part of the U.S. Army, but they learned about some of the terrifying research taking place at Mariposa Military Base, killed the head researchers, and radioed a cheerful fuck you to command. They get no response, probably because they sent this message two or three days before the U.S. and China decided to glass the planet. Number 2. The future Brotherhood of Steel gathered up their families and basically any civilians and scientists that were nearby that weren't assholes and hunkered down in Mariposa for a while. Number three, once they decided the wasteland was safe enough to travel in, they moved to the Lost Hills bunker where we meet them in Fallout. The journey is devastating to the future Brotherhood, especially their families. Captain Maxson, the man in charge and future elder of the Brotherhood, loses his wife and basically decides that the rest of the wasteland can go fuck itself. At this point, the Brotherhood gets one of their major defining traits. They've decided the rest of the wasteland doesn't deserve to have any technology more advanced than a tape dispenser. The Brotherhood is undeniably the most technologically advanced faction. They have power armor and miniguns, and they're the only faction where you can get surgery to increase your special stats in Fallout 1. When we meet up with the Brotherhood in Fallout 2, they're basically screwed. We see maybe four members of the Brotherhood in the entire game. They also have their first case of post-apocalyptic penis envy, because the Enclave shows up and they've developed new technology since the war. The Brotherhood's best technology is mostly just dusting off stuff that was state-of-the-art in 2077. Sometime after Fallout 1, possibly after Fallout 2, it's a little fuzzy on what exactly is canon, 
Some members of the Brotherhood want to open up their ranks, and rather than being a secret organization that you're either born into or a player character who does something badass to join, be a well-trained, badass group that protects technology. The high leadership of the Brotherhood sends either one or two waves east, basically so they'll get out of their hair. One group ends up near Chicago, and they're the protagonists of Fallout Tactics. Either another piece of that same group or a second wave went east and ended up in D.C. via Pittsburgh. Again, tactics is only sort of canon, so it's a little vague what happened with all that. However, since they're east mainly because their bosses wanted them to go away, they don't get much support or really much of anything. They're basically separate factions that share the same incredibly stylish outfits. Fallout 3's Brotherhood of Steel are... well, they're heroes. It's weird. They try to hunt mutants, save the day, fight the Enclave... hell, they organize the distribution of pure water through the capital wasteland just because. Having seen their other appearances, a purely heroic Brotherhood kind of freaks me out. I'm not the only one, because the Capital Brotherhood has a splinter faction called Brotherhood Outcasts. They didn't agree with the hero policies of Elder Lions and split off, split off to be secretive and hoard technology. Lions has dialogue in Fallout 3 that sums up the Outcasts, and by extension the Brotherhood's general outlook on things. Anyone knows how to make another human but the secrets of a P-90 plasma rifle are lost. Back west, after Fallout 2, the NCR and the Brotherhood had some sort of falling out. Best I can gather from New Vegas, the NCR wanted to use the technology to make money and improve the standard of living for the average citizen, and the Brotherhood wanted to throw it in a vault. This means war! By the time New Vegas rolls around, the Brotherhood are cowering in their bunkers, basically just hoping the NCR will roll over and die. As Elder McNamara says... We've outlasted the end of the world. We'll outlast these upstarts. China got the bomb, but have no fears. They can't wipe us out for at least five years. Who's next? 